Hello everyone. So today we are going to discuss about how bacteria grow on culture medium. Okay, so in first year in your bachelor's, you are told to inoculate water sample or soil sample on a culture medium, and you incubate that plate for some time. Okay, say um, 18 hours or 24 hours. After that, you observe lots of bacterial colonies, or say isolated colonies or you get a mat growth okay so how does this happens is there any magic or it's the science so that's what we are going to study today so first let's see what is culture media so media or medium is a substance which provides nutrients for the growth of microorganisms in short it is the food for microbes that we provide the nutrients on which organisms are cultivated that means we introduce uh, microbes to that particular media and we try to grow them. So at that time or where these type of nutrient medias are used, they are also known as culture media. Okay. So media plate or culture media plate is same. Now the culture media is available in mostly it is used in three forms that is solid, semi-solid and liquid. So agar is used to solidify our culture media and broth is where agar is not added so it remains liquid. When the amount of agar is um, reduced to half you get a semi-solid media okay a jelly like uh, nutrient media and solid is where you use complete required proportion of agar. So mostly we use 2 grams for 100 ml okay now growth of these bacteria or say fungal or yeast colonies or nutrient media is actually a science and not magic so when you add a drop of water on media plate and after some time that is we provide time for bacteria to grow and that time we uh, term it as incubation okay so you see some bacterial colonies growing on it so cultivating microbes is an ideal way to reveal the bacteria that are hiding all around us okay so not just soil and water even the surface of our mobile screen or um, the currency that we use or the table on which we are working even the uh, keys for from our laptop keyboard okay so everywhere microbes are present and cultivating microbes in lab is an ideal way to reveal what kind of bacteria are hiding all around us okay so now how this works so it is uh, okay let's get a example here so you can relate it with plants so like plants uh, we know that a seed is sown in soil where it gets nutrients water and light source that is sunlight and it germinates and after some time it gets uh, converted or the proper growth is attained and we term it as a plant okay so this is how our bacterial cells they also get converted to a bacterial colony now in case of bacteria nutrient medium or the culture medium is equal to soil that we provide to plants water is present in culture media even plants get water from soil temperature we provide depending on our aim as we incubate in incubator and oxygen requirement also depends on our aim of experiment or the type of bacteria that we are handling it can be aerobic that means one which requires oxygen and anaerobic which means ones one which do not require oxygen for growth and seed is here actually a single mature bacterial cell or the mother cell that has the ability to grow and multiply when the favorable conditions are available so this is diagrammatic representation that i'm using here to explain you so this is a plate of nutrient agar which is solid and it is the culture media plate that suppose we are using so this nutrient agar will act as food here and we will inoculate our sample now what is inoculation so inoculation is the process where we introduce small amounts of microorganisms to culture media where they can grow 
now we know that our tap water suppose we are using it as a sample so even it contains different kinds of microbes so a loop full that means very small amount of water if you use it to inoculate even it will contain hundreds of microbes so there are four different methods that you can use for inoculation first is a loop full can be used to strike then you can perform spread plate or pour plate or you can use swab which is dipped in that tap water and then it is used to streak on your nutrient agar plate okay now any of these four methods is um, okay if you want to use now you suppose have um, opted for streak plate so a loop full of sample is streaked by using four quadrant method that is the standard method that is taught to you in your first year okay so what you do the loop or the wire loop is so small it is made up of a uh, nichrome wire and it is used to lightly you streak it okay you don't have to dig the agar on the surface of agar you have to uh, draw the lines say using your loop okay so while you are inoculating you are streaking what happens the sample water sample is getting inoculated on that media agar surface and it is getting diluted as you move further while you are streaking for second quadrant third quadrant and fourth quadrant okay so everything that means inoculation is to be done in a septic conditions after doing that what you do you incubate okay so you can see here i have uh, zoomed this portion so streak lines are where your bacterial cells are inoculated okay so you can see here from first quadrant i have taken two streak lines to continue to my second quadrant from second quadrant i have again used two lines to get my sample uh, continued further for the third quadrant and from third quadrant to fourth quadrant okay so this is how your bacterial cells they get inoculated they get isolated that means uh, two bacterial cells they are separated okay as we streak further so streaking it dilutes your sample and single bacterial cells are isolated and they are inoculated so this is the stage where you are you have completed your streaking and now you are incubating so at the time of incubation what happens these single cells they will multiply they will divide many times to produce too many of their daughter cells okay so from this one cell uh, or this first let's consider this is the one cell that is dividing so it will divide in two cells now those two cells will divide further to give four daughter cells and this is how on that particular spot only uh, the cell bacterial cell keeps on multiplying and dividing and thus the bacterial cells they get piled up or stacked up on each other and this gives or this forms a bacterial colony now this is a pure isolated colony why because it has originated from a single bacterial cell that has divided or multiplied too many times okay so we assume it that a pure colony is always uh, we can say it has derived from a single bacterial cell thus it is pure now you can see here these are there are 1 2 3 four and five types of different bacterial colonies here now these are the ones which are growing uh, nearby one another because while inoculating or say um, this can be a contamination as well so the bacterial cells they were placed so closely that when the colony developed it got merged okay and these are the ones which are isolated here again there is a small colony growing in between this big colony so it depends so how to differentiate between a contamination and isolation so you can see here these are the streak lines that 
you had uh, drawn when you were streaking so the bacterial cells which are growing on those streak lines are the one that you have inoculated and one that is not on your streak line is the contamination okay so this is the difference now if you are new to this subject then there is difference between bacterial colony yeast colony and fungal colony so you can see here bacterial colonies they are of different colors they are slimy and they have different textures colorful as well but yeast colony they are actually very sticky and dull as compared to the one which are bacterial and the fungal colonies they are very easy to identify because they have cottony growth and big big colonies okay so this is the difference now a single cell how the bacterial colony grows okay that's what we are studying here so a single cell it starts adapting to the environment in the petri plate that we have provided and it starts using the nutrients which are present so that is the lag phase okay then the cell it starts growing and multiplying rapidly thus an increasing cell number is seen this is the log phase okay if you have to compare with the growth curve okay it's easy to understand now all the cells in the colony they have same characteristics why because the colony has derived or it has rose from a single bacterial cell so bacterial multiplication it leads to colony formation right now in case of yeast culture a single yeast cell and in case of fungi a fungal spore it starts growing and multiplying when the environment is favorable in case of fungi you observe mycelial growth and big colonies as it spreads throughout the plate in search of nutrients okay so you will see there is uh, the colony size of bacterial and yeast cell is very small as compared to the fungal cells okay now we had studied about bacterial growth on agar plate now in case of broth so broth is where agar is not added but all the other nutrients they remain same okay just we are not uh, getting our media solidified that's the difference so we don't observe colonies in case of broth but only turbidity is the indicator here that yes there is bacterial growth so you can see here the first tube is controlled where there is no growth just a clear transparent culture media but in second tube you can see the media has turned little bit hazy and it is also termed as turbidity okay so there is bacterial growth so a small amount of inoculum is added under aseptic conditions to sterile broth it is incubated on shaker to provide aeration and agitation okay and those bacterial cells from inoculum they will now adapt to the given environment and start growing and multiplying an increase in the number of bacterial cells turns the color of media or the transparency which we term as turbidity or optical density of cells okay so this was about how bacteria they grow on culture media so i hope your concept is clear now i hope you like my video do share my videos with your friends and do subscribe to my channel